Hi everyone, I'm Magic Dave and this is Sapiens. So it's been about five or six weeks since the last video and I don't have a huge amount of content to show for it, but I do have quite a few engine changes and improvements, um, some AI to show off and some new water that you can just see down there. We'll have a look at that later. But yeah, first I wanted to show you the AI. So yeah, as you can see, they are waving to each other a little bit oddly. <laughs> <laughs> awkwardly um, so yeah so basically what I had before with the AI was that it was sort of like a hive mind where you'd the, the engine would look at all of the currently queued up orders and look at all the people that are nearby and pick the best fit um, and try or try to uh, and it wasn't doing a great job but you know I could have I could have fixed it all up and I could have had it all working that way and many games do do have it this way with the AI um, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know, that's that's fine. But what I thought I might try to do is actually make it more of an individual-based um, system. So each each sapien has their own sort of idea of the world, has their own goals, has their own um, their own way of figuring out what they wanted to do next, um, and not sort of this magic knowledge of everything. Um, and yeah, I think that's a really good way of doing it and I think it's just going to make these people a lot more believable and a lot more sort of relatable and individual. So, and, and that's important to me for this game. So yeah, uh, so that's what I thought I would do and the actual way to approach that, um, you know, was, was difficult. <laughs> but uh, I decided that I would start with um, getting the head movement sort of working, getting them to look around and, um, and and assess things that they actually see within their field of vision. So treat it like you know they've got senses and then they're reacting to those senses. And so that's what's happening here. They're actually sort of randomly looking around but then focused on other sapiens that are nearby um, because there are no orders queued up right now so that's all they're interested in is sort of each other and so at the moment they have one interaction available to them and that's to wave and so what you know if, if they look at someone and they notice that that they're now looking at them so they've both made eye contact then they will wave um, which yeah I think is actually working quite well and obviously it's not going to stay like this they're not just going to keep waving to each other but as a sort of starting point for for future interactions um, I think it's quite cool. So in doing this, I had to actually get these head rotations to work, and that was uh, quite fun. You know, the first step was having them sort of rotating around, and they'd just keep rotating all the way around. Um, but yeah, once I sort of figured out how to clamp the rotations correctly and then recombine them into a, into a rotation matrix again, um, it all sort of came together. It actually took a bit longer than I anticipated, probably two or three days just to get these head rotations working. And that's because, you know, it's the first kind of procedural animation that's going in um, on top of the, the animation that's been created in Blender. Um, you know, so yeah, but it, it's come out quite well and I think that I'll be able to reuse that for other animations as well and certainly for like animals and things, you'll be able to see where they're looking as well. Anyway, let's uh, lead this tribe. Um, so now, now I'll queue up, say, this chop action, and what you'll see is all of them turn around and start walking towards the tree. Um, so obviously there is more work yet to do, uh, but only one of them ends up chopping down the tree. So they know that, you know, at least that the, the, the action is taken at that point. Um, but b before it would have just sent one person, and arguably that might be better. But, um, you know, what, what would actually normally happen in reality is they would sort of have an agreement amongst themselves. They might, you know, talk, you might say, yell out to say, hey, I'm going to do this, or uh, you might just start walking and then someone else will actually see that, that you are walking and therefore not start walking themselves. And that's how I want to approach it. So, you know, there's a little bit more work to go where they actually see that someone else is on the way to a job and then therefore will stop. Um, but at least it will be more kind of realistic. Uh, so I won't go into any more detail about the AI just right now, um, you know, it's still a work in progress. I think I've done enough on it for now that I can at least, you know, everything's working again and they're able to do all their orders and stuff, so it's time to move on, but I'll certainly be coming back to this in the future, um, adding a lot more interesting sort of individual reactions to things and stuff, so yeah, I'm quite looking forward to carrying on with that. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to build a storage area. So in the previous um, video, these were large, and my idea for them would be that, that, that you could um, store lots of different kinds of resources. 
Um, but I decided it would probably be best if just one sort of set of resource types could be stored in each one, uh, just for kind of ease of use of the, the use, user interface and things. Um, so if I just go to store the, this grass, um, one of them will pick it up and plop it in there. Um, yeah, still work to go with the animations and stuff. But um, and I've also got store all um, for uh, it'll, it'll take all of the items in the general area and start stacking them up. Um, yeah, and I think you know that's a good start. Uh, there'll probably need to be quite a few options in here as far as you know like that could be another way of saying bring everything of a certain type to me as opposed to send everything to a storage area so you could have both sort of ways of storing things yeah so i worked a bit on sort of the stack distribution as well initially they're sort of lined up in, in rows um and then that looked very unnatural so i tried to figure out a way of getting them to sort of pile up more naturally and this is all procedural so I, all i have to say is what the size of each kind of resource type is and it will just create a sort of distribution that looks um you know fairly okay uh, and i think that's working fairly well um, another thing is that this grass is now turned into hay, so this is now storing hay, so um, they will, after some amount of time, just turn from grass into hay, whether they're in a storage area or if they're floating around. Um, yeah, that was sort of, I guess that was something I really needed to get right, because it's part of part of how I want resources to work. You know, I want like apples to rot if you store them for too long. Um, I want, yeah, things to be able to change into other things when they're sort of left around the place. Um, you might have also noticed that these um, branches and logs and stuff are actually a different um, different type. These are now pine logs as, a as opposed to just your standard sort of birch. Um, I think if I pull this out, I'll still get a birch branch. Uh, I'll just pull out a couple of these just to show you. Um, so now if I queue up building a campfire... Yeah, so that's a birch branch. Obviously, that's going to change. I don't even know what these, these are going to give you when you pull them out. <laughs> Look at them all following each other. Yeah. Um, another thing that I really need to sort out is is their sort of avoidance of each other. That's definitely on the to-do list. Um, so they could actually walk around um, each other. But yeah, um, let's get them just building this. So she's putting in a birch branch. He's putting in a pine branch. Pine branch in there and birch branch in there. So yeah, that you know that was something that I really wanted to have in this game is that you know you've got um, the ability basically you know this will work for house building as well. So if you've got using different kinds of rocks, um, then you will end up with different looks. And yeah, it was something I wasn't totally sure that I would be able to achieve, uh, but I have. It, it, it really does work. So um, it shouldn't really be any major performance um, problem or anything like that. Uh, so yeah, I'm quite happy that that's turned out, turned out the way that I'd hoped. Uh, so now I'll just uh, sh talk about the water a little bit. Uh, so yeah, I, um, I carried on working on the water. Um, I just wasn't quite happy with it yet. Uh, so what I've done is I've added in a, a noise-based sort of um, ripple effect. So um, before it was all kind of sine waves and stuff, whereas now uh, it's using um, a normal map to, to also um, reflect the, the light in different directions um, and spent quite a lot of time trying to get this sort of sparkly sparkly sun reflection um, yeah and I'm fairly happy with it you know it still doesn't quite have that shine that I'm that I'm after <laughs> uh, well maybe well, maybe I'll have a look at that again but yeah I also fixed up quite a few artifacts around the edges and things um, and yeah just generally tidied it up and yeah I I could definitely leave this. <laughs> I probably should definitely leave this. Uh, there's still the sine wave based sort of swell lines coming through that you can see. Um, yeah, and so I've sort of got that mixed in with, with noise sort of based stuff. And hmm, very nice, I think, but probably I've spent far too long on it. <laughs> So I just thought I'd build this campfire down by the water here to show off a couple of things. Um, in the last video I was sort of talking about the particle for the fire effect and just how it was a bit not very good. Uh, so I've improved that. As you can see there's sort of like two little emitters here. There's one little one and one bigger one. So I was just sort of testing that out and just yeah seeing what I could do with the um, particle engine that I've got. Um, yeah definitely improvement 
probably needs a bit more work and it's still a little bit a little bit um, not, it's not running at 60 frames per second at the moment so I've got to figure that, uh, that out too but that should be okay uh, as you can see she's also looking at the fire so that's um, that's one thing that I kind of added at the end and he's <laughs> looking at her um, oh there we go They're waving again nope nope don't want to talk to you um, I'm just I'm loving these little sort of I mean obviously it's very very simple AI but just the little sort of reactions that you sort of get and and sort of stories that you're already sort of starting to imagine <laughs> out of all of this um, I've also got the fire reflecting in the water um, which I think looks quite nice and I think when you've got a lot of light sources around in a larger town um, it could look pretty good uh, interesting that there's a fire that's not visible reflecting through there that's obviously a bug I need to test that against the terrain <laughs> anyway Oh, and I also worked on um, on some music. Uh, yeah, I've been just thinking about how, what kind of music I want to have in this game. And I would like to make my own music this time, uh, mostly at least. Uh, so yeah, what you're listening to now is actually the first track that I've started working on. It's not done yet, but yeah. The other thing that I spent quite a lot of time on was the, um, the frame rate. Uh, so hopefully, as I go along here, you won't notice any stuttering whatsoever. Um, and that's surprisingly hard to achieve. So basically, to achieve 60 frames per second on average is not too difficult. I mean, it's difficult, but that, that's one of the challenges. But to actually never drop a frame is much, much harder. Um, and obviously you can turn up your graphic settings and um, and still drop frames. But the thing that I was finding um, was, well for starters there was there was a, a occasional CPU spikes and they would cause me to miss a frame. And I eventually found out that SDL, which is the library that I use for putting a window on the screen and for events and things, um, was actually trying to see if any joysticks had been plugged in every three seconds. So every three seconds it would spend quite a lot of time looking to see if there are any joysticks, even though I am not actually asking for joystick support in SDL. And so that time was too long and it would drop a frame. So every three seconds I would notice it dropping a frame. And I guess for a lot of games it doesn't matter. In fact, many, many games just drop frames all over the place. Nobody really cares. But I just, I just wanted to get to the bottom of it. <laughs> I wanted to know why. And so I, did, I tracked it down to that. And there is a patch um, in the current source repository for SDL uh, to fix this sort of fix it if you are not using joystick support um, but basically if, if you're if you've got a game at the moment that um, uses SDL and has uh, uses it for joystick support then there's no way not to drop a frame every three seconds currently uh, which yeah a little bit disappointing um, but anyway so I fixed that and I fixed a few other little um, little hiccups in my um, in my code um, and I also found that often, even if you are rendering at 60 frames per second, if you're not perfectly interpolating movement in every everything, then you will see it stuttering. And one thing in particular was that my camera rotation was not interpolated correctly. And so even though it was rendering, rendering at 60 frames per second, sometimes the camera would just stop rotating for a whole frame in between um, times, and that would look really bad as you rotate it around. Whereas now it's um, nice and smooth. Um, another thing that can easily drop frames is loading in geometry. Uh, so I did a bit more work to ensure that as you zo zoom around and it's loading up all the trees and, and higher detailed terrain, that it's not doing any of that work on the rendering thread. Um, it's now actually copying all of that data, creating all of it and putting it all on, onto the graphics card on a separate thread, which means that it just you know, doesn't affect performance. So that was a little bit of extra work. It was already most of the way there, but there were just a few things that I was still doing on the main thread that I shouldn't have been. I've now got a dedicated transfer queue for those who understand what a little bit about Vulkan. Um, yeah, so there's a transfer queue that sort of does all its work on another thread and, and it's great. Okay, so as well as all of the sort of camera movement and everything, the positions of the sapiens themselves, the animation frames and everything also needed to be smooth. And that, uh, previously for some reason I decided to do all the animations on the, not on the main thread. And that was a problem because 
basically then I'd have to do double the work because all that that's doing is just sort of interpolating skeleton frames and so there's no reason to do that on another thread. So I've moved that over to the main thread now which is where it should be um, and that's causing all of these animations to look much much smoother um, and also when things when things fall uh, and uh, you know the physics of objects and stuff is also now smoothly interpolated. So anyway lots of smooth interpolation <laughs> is kind of the, the end result of all of that and as a result you know this this looks much much nicer. Um, the particles incidentally are not smoothly interpolated and you can see that quite clearly that they are just jittery as anything um, and so yeah I'll need to need to fix that up. Okay so I think that's most of the new things that I've worked on in the past um, few weeks. Um, yeah, I got a bit bogged down in a couple of areas, uh, mostly to do with all that performance um, stuff. So yeah, it's been a little bit slow, it's felt a bit slow the last few weeks, but uh, I, th I think I'm now pretty much on to content and um, gameplay. Um, I want to work on skills and uh, the actual progression through sort of knowledge. Uh, I think that's quite important now at this point to get that, that mechanic um, really working and to actually get, get to the point where you can start the game and actually actually play it, uh, proper play testing. Because I do have plenty of things to do on my to-do list to do just with engine and, and things, but um, I think doing it without that context of the content would be a mistake at this point. So yeah, it's always a bit of a uh, balancing act, trying to decide when to add content, because if you add it too, too early, then it becomes sort of a weight around your neck that actually makes it hard to change things. Uh, but yeah, I think it's time. I also, I've just um, tested it on a remote server, so I've created a, a server in New York which has a 220 millisecond ping from here, which uh, is about pretty much, I think, as bad as you're going to get, uh, short of major network issues. So it worked brilliantly, I was really happy, um, <laughs> I was amazed actually how, how smoothly that all went. Um, oh yeah, there's pathfinding issues still, they're not at, at all checking for objects if they're going to walk through them, um, more things to do. But yeah, so multiplayer testing, I've got a bit more of that to do and then I'm going to work on um, usability improvements uh, for playtesting, uh, for my own sanity, in particular sort of cancelling cancelling of orders and, and things and plans so if you chop down a tree you can then cancel the action you know the, the order to chop down the tree and also I want to make it so you can speed up time um, because it can get tedious sometimes waiting for these guys to do their job and my whole kind of idea with this um, game is that you would be able to speed up time maybe three, three to ten times even so they're actually really fast moving stuff so you don't have to wait around uh, so yeah, that's uh, first on the to-do list and then on to content. Anyway, um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you're as excited about the future of this game as I am at this point. And um, yeah, I'll do another video in a month or so and we'll catch you then.